Today in the music analysis series called What I Learned From, I'm going to show you my favorite part of the song Rope by the Foo Fighters and along with some great composition and songwriting techniques. For all the people who are not interested in guitar music, don't worry because these techniques and tricks can be applied to any style. So let's get creative. The Foo Fighters have been a staple of modern rock music for quite some time now. What I find so interesting about them is that somehow they managed to cross the barriers and create music that also appeals to a non-rock loving audience. And they do it without compromising their sound or identity. Just think of songs like Learn to Fly, The Best of You, Everlong and times like these. I think what is part of their secret is their ability to write these epic choruses that are just begging to be sung in a stadium with thousands of other music lovers. It's times like these, time and time again. The intro of Rope grabbed me immediately because, let's be honest, even on piano, this sounds great. And let alone how it sounds on electric guitar. Because all the chords in their basic form are suspended four chords, it has this kind of ambiguity and tension to it. One chord progression that I really love comes at the end of the chorus. And more about the chorus later. This is what it sounds like. This progression creates incredible tension leading from the chorus back to the verse and the bridge. And they do this by using so-called secondary dominant chords. And not just normal ones, they use secondary dominant chords in first inversion. I've made a full episode on how you can easily use these type of secondary dominant chords in your music. So be sure to put that on your watch list for later. A quick explanation before we get to the good stuff. Dominant chords create movement and tension. These are the chords that sit on your fifth scale degree and they want to resolve back to your tonic chord, which is on your first scale degree. A secondary dominant is a chord that creates tension and movement towards any other chord that is not your tonic. In the short example from Rope, the second normal chord is A. This is our temporary tonic. And E major is our temporary dominant, or as we can call it, secondary dominant. Have a look. The last detail is that not the tonic note is your lowest note or bass note, but it is the major third. So when the root note is not the bass note, but the third in this case, then it's called a chord in first inversion. Here is the whole passage of rope with secondary dominance in first inversion. Did you also notice the beautiful half step or chromatic movement of the bass notes? To the chorus. There are multiple reasons to why the chorus sounds so uplifting, energetic and even slightly melancholic. The first thing that you notice is that the chords are being strummed and the notes are allowed to sound more brilliantly instead of the heavy guitar riff oriented verse. Second of all, the vocal melody starts on a way higher pitch than it does in the verse and by using this classic trick you already create heaps of energy. But the last one is a structural trick that needs a little bit more explanation because it's so useful and powerful. In the verse, the home bass is B minor, which is on the sixth scale degree or the relative minor of D major as it's called. But the chorus starts, stops and circles around on the G major, which is the fourth scale degree. 
This might not seem as a big thing, but actually it is. Because the G major is not your tonic or relative minor. So that means that this chord never really has the function of being a resting place. The starting and ending point of your chorus already has energy when it starts, but also when it ends. For the more advanced people watching, you can even accentuate the Lydian mode or feel when using this chord progression of the chorus. In the description you can check out my modal chord progression videos if you want to take a deep dive. The song Rope might be too heavy for some of you, but there are just so many things that I left unspoken and so much more to learn. For example, the repeating chord progression from the intro or the heavy riff oriented verse, which in itself uses a chromatic median. So a lot of food for thought and maybe even some left for another episode. In the meantime, you can check out my song analysis on how Tame Impala wrote the strangest hit song here. Or if you want to take a deep dive into creative composition and songwriting techniques, then you can check out this playlist here. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And for now, see you next time.